Hello, everyone. Welcome to Night Dive Studios Deep Dive. I have a very special guest with me today. I have Dave from New Blood. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Anyways, we're talking Rise of the Triad. Uh, we've we've been talking with devs, talking with artists, fixers, um, but you're kind of the the big man behind it all. Um, yep. Can you give me a little? Well, let me butter you up a little bit, and then Ooh. you can plead your case. But uh, yeah, give me a little bit of history with um, yeah Rise of Triad and how you came involved with that game. Oh man, I haven't told this story in I don't know for at least a week. Um, <laughs> so I mean, originally, so oh man, okay, back in what was it? Must have been 2011, 2010, 2011. Um, I was um, I was a popular games writer, blogger for you know all the websites, PC Gamer, Kotaku, VG247, you name it. That was like my my hobby on the side. I was selling used cars, and you know, at night I would play World of Warcraft and you know write about video games for various websites to you know make some money and get my name out there in the video game. And I don't know, it was a thing to do, right? Um, and one of the things I covered because I used to like to find stories about shooters and stuff and retro shooters because that was always been my thing. You know, it was always my my thing growing up. Loved games like Doom and Quake and Duke Nukem and Half Life and all that shit. Um, I found this um. These Danish guys were trying to remake Duke Nukem 3D in the Unreal Engine. It was called Duke Nukem Reloaded. And I thought this looked really, really cool. And I wrote a story about it and ended up, you know, getting a bunch of publicity. And me and Frederick, you know, Fred, who is now from 3D Realm Slipgate, um, mm -hmm. you know, became acquainted that way. And he realized that I was a guy who could, you know, get make things popular as i do um and i had been looking you know to get out of get more into the games industry get out of games blogging as a hobby and kind of get into like marketing because i have you know i had a marketing background and stuff um and like actually get into the games industry proper and um i think it was around 2011 something like that fred reached out and he said hey man um you know we're looking for like someone to help us out with um i got in touch i'll do my fred impression because i always yeah, do yeah. it He's give, like, it, give me your best one this legendary this legendary publisher and they want to do they want to do something um and you know i, I told them that i know you and you could maybe get us involved and help us get some you know press and marketing and I was like, yeah, man, who is it? He's like, oh, I get you on the call. We'll see. Um, and he gets me on the call and it's uh, Terry from Apogee, Terry Navy. <laughs> nice. Um, and I was like, hey, yeah, legendary publisher that I, you know, because, you know, I mean, hey, Apogee's Apogee, right? Even though it was a new Apogee, not the old Apogee. But it was the first time I'd ever talked to Terry and everybody loves Terry. You know, he's basically Hank Hill, right? Yep. Um, yep. So you're going, hi, Dave, what's up? It's me, Terry. Uh, love to meet you. We're doing we're doing a thing with this here, Frederick and these Danish boys. Um, and uh, we're trying to... We're Fred, tell them what we're trying to do. And Fred goes, yeah, so they have the rights to do one more Duke Nukem game. They can do one more. There's like weird contract stuff and they can do like one more Duke Nukem. And we want to do it. It has to be like a top-down shooter. <laughs> you know, this eventually became the whole Duke Mass Destruction bombshell thing years later. Yeah. But like at the time, Apogee did literally have somehow had the rights to do one more Duke Nukem game. Okay. Um, okay. And this was around 2010, 2011, when Duke Forever, the Gearbox version, finally shipped. It did not do well. People did not like Duke Nukem, myself included. I was like, we should probably just let it die. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to raise money and trying to get marketing and publishing. And I told Fred, I was like, I'm not interested. I straight up was like, no, I don't want to work on Duke Nukem. <laughs> I, would, I don't want to touch Duke Nukem with a 10 foot pole. Like, I love Duke Nukem. You know, it was one of my formative memories was playing Duke 3D with my dad, you know, and him coming and be like, blowing out your ass, boy. And be like, mm -hmm, you're so funny, daddy. Um, you know, and uh, so we were got to, I was, I was like, thank you, but no thanks. I appreciate you reaching out to me. I, you know, I, you know, I, I am trying to get into the game industry do marketing and pr and stuff but like that not i'm not trying to start with a duke nukem game that i'm not 100 I, I also i wasn't like convinced they actually had the rights to do it i was like right. that sounds sketchy because i'm pretty sure gearbox owns duke nukem now and they're like no 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 we got the rights to one more they were it was true i mean there ended up being a whole thing they end up losing the rights that's how bombshell happened blah 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 um but this was like five, six years before then. Um, and anyway, so we're about to get off the call. And I'm thinking like, yeah, Apogee, Apogee, man, what else? What else? And I go, and I'm like, hey, do you, do you guys still have the rights to like Rise of the Triad and shit like that? And Terry goes, yeah, we still got Rise of the Triad. I've been trying to do a, I've been trying to do a rot, like remaster HD version. And I was like, I'd fucking love to do that. I loved Rise of the Triad. I feel like nobody remembers 
Rise of the Triad. Right? I'd love yeah. to bring Rise of the Triad back. And Fred was like, yeah, I love Rock. Rock we could do that. Oh, fuck Duke Nukem. We'll do right. Because Fred was just trying to do anything he could, right? He just wanted to, he was this, just like me. He wanted to make a real video game. Yeah. Before that, he'd only been making mods and stuff and trying to remake Duke Nukem and Unreal Engine. But, you know, he wanted to start a real game studio and make a real game. And I wanted to be like a games marketing and PR guy. And Terry wanted to bring Apogee back. So, Blah, 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 you know Beautiful. long story short that's how rise of the triad 2013 it came to be so it was like late 2011 we started getting the ball rolling in 2012 um you know we we announced it and stuff with your buddy tom ole from evolve yes. pr who i had known from my time as a games blogger and writer you know tom was the guy they represented like you know um you know lots of you know companies and stuff so he would get me like press copies and you know so i knew i knew he was like a good you know pr guy in the games industry to get so we hired evolve and we started rolling and it got really popular you know development was hell because none of us knew what the fuck we were doing you know terry and the apogee guys hadn't made a proper game since the 90s fred had never made a real game only mods I never marked on marketing or PR or anything for a video game in my life. I just knew like, you know, how to get, you know, I was popular on Twitter and I wrote articles right. and, you know, but I knew what people, I, I knew how to get attention for stuff. Um, so it was a fucking mess for like two years, but we, we got it done. We came out. It did, it did well enough. Cause you know, <laughs> I mean, it was busted. The It still barely runs, um, it, you know, but like we did it, we remade rise of the triad in 2013 and, Back then, if you had a game on Steam, it kind of just did well by default, by being on Steam. There was like 500 games on Steam when we released Rod. If it came out today, it would have like 20 user reviews and be right. like mostly negative because it, it doesn't run on Steam Deck. But back then, if you put out like a 6 or 7 out of 10 game that worked pretty well on Steam, you're going to sell a few hundred thousand copies just by being there. Yeah, there weren't any by user existing. reviews. There wasn't any, you know, there was no anything back then. Steam was just the Wild West. Like, it was basically, yeah, the Wild West. You couldn't put your own games on Steam. You had to know somebody at Valve back then and, like, get someone, like, to put the game. They made all the art for you back then. That's how small <laughs> Steam was back in 2013. Um, but, yeah, and that, you know, I was um, I was happy we did it. Um, and it was, it, we, you know, Rise of the Triad came back, and it is very much credited with being, like, the first boomer shooter or you know you know yep. re-release of because you gotta remember back then it was the dark ages you know we the closest thing you had to like a game where you could move and shoot and carry weapons at the time was like bullet storm other than and that really wasn't that was a very console ass unreal 3 game Big other time. than that you had like it was like we were in like peak call of duty regenerating health carry two weapons and hide behind boxes gears of war yep. time in the game industry you, you got know, the jam you on your not, on your hud coming yeah, in and you had to wait for the jam yet, to disappear like a meme at the time it had not we had not yet come around back to like you know it doom 2016 and dusk yep. and all that shit you know like we were we were that pc gaming was like pretty close to like it was just coming back because of steam mm -hmm. but you know if y'all who don't know like you know, between like the Xbox 360 era and the Steam era, there was like, PC shooters were like it was very dead before was Steam. Scarce, like, yeah, like, we still had to go to like a store like Best Buy or CompUSA or Circuit City to buy like physical PC games, and DRM was crazy. Like you could barely run like ga games for Windows Live. Like shit was it was dark. <laughs> it, was, like, <laughs> it was the dark fucking ages for PC games. Like around 2010, it wasn't really until like 2014, 2015 where Steam started to explode. That you know it's yeah. now come back to where it's obviously the biggest platform for games on earth. Get fucked, Xbox 360. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I love my 360. It was hey great. man, the party system, being able to hang out and chill with your homies. It was it was, was great, it was a time that and place. Was, Days. but that was like i was not using my i was pc gaming was not a thing nope. then I mean, it was it was you know but there was a big there was a big gap between like 2000 and 2015 yeah actually more like 2005 and so i feel like pc gaming like that console you know that jump that all the pc developers died during you know like the the looking glasses and the, yes. all that you know all that because they tried to make the judge like the ion storms around like 2003 4 5 where they're all like i guess we have to make xbox games now and it just didn't work and half those studios died so between like 2005 and 2010 or 2015 almost it was mm -hmm. it was it was dark times for for first person shooters um yep. So Sick, yeah, I mean man. the best you the best you'd get was like Bioshock, you know, and thinking and like Bioshock was awesome, but like thinking back now to like what kind of game that was, that was you know not the kind of stuff that we were into. So anyway, Rise of the Triad. 
you resurrected it. But at the time, it was just like, holy shit, you can move really fast and carry like five weapons at a time. And it was silly and stupid and wasn't balanced. Um, So, yeah, it was that's how Rise of the Triad came back the first time. That one was an amazing story. Thank you for telling it again. Um, (laughs) Just one thing on that. What, you know, you released that and and what lessons did you take away? Because you've obviously continued to do it you've continued yeah. to do it uh, like what lessons did we learn? Uh, people in retro games quick saving and manual saving is important okay uh you will never be able to launch a game without quick saves or manual saves no matter how hard your game design leans into it even with a game like gloomwood that's supposed to be like resident evil we're yeah. only supposed to have save rooms we're not capcom we can't get away with that shit um so that's important. Uh, performance is very important. Your video, especially nowadays, like, you know, we, we put out Fallen Aces in Early Access three months ago, and it doesn't mm-hmm. run good on Steam Deck yet. And, like, it's people are losing their minds. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know our Early Access game had to run at 60 frames on Steam Deck at launch. You yeah, know, it's, chill. But, yeah, we're actually putting out a patch this week that addresses the vid. It runs fine on my ROG ally. You exactly. know, a more powerful handheld. Uh, thanks, Aces. They send me those for free. <laughs> I tweet about them so much they're um, good though hey right? the rog's yeah. good what oh the ally is awesome yeah. dude i love the ally it's okay. like it's so like the only thing the steam deck really has over it is if you like those touch pads which i don't use mm. and it's got the OLED. so the oled screen's really nice but the ally and it's got the yeah. ally x it's like literally like three times as powerful as the steam deck so like That's stuff crazy. that the steam deck barely runs like the ally runs 120 frames per second like most of our games at 1080p right. the steam deck's only 900 people rag on it because it's windows and i'm like oh i'm sorry you don't know how to use windows what are you fucking 12 <laughs> anyway <laughs> if you own one of like, those sorry, you should know how to use windows like yeah. anyway but no no i, I, I'm I digress big, yeah like i get why people like the steam deck for certain things but like the ally which is this is just a case for it. my actual l is in you know hooked up to my tv in the living room um nice. it's just a, it's a it's a beast of a of a thing um, in terms of handheld it's definitely my favorite um yeah, the, i cut you off there on your about? on your lessons performance well, quick saves right anyway my lesson buy an ROG ally. <laughs> use code new blood at checkout now we don't actually have it thanks yeah um yeah, so the lessons there and also just like how to make a game, how to invest in a game, how to work with people, how to retain people, the kind of thing, mostly what not to do. You know, mm-hmm. after every game that we've made since Rise of the Triad or I've made, because, you know, a lot of some of the people that worked on that game ended up with me in New Blood years later. Mm-hmm. Um, just lesson like every game you make should you should learn lessons from the previous game about what not to do, things you could do better, things players like and players don't like. So tons of lessons about um a lot of lessons about level design and like you know game design and systems and just simple things uh you know about multiplayer design um you know the things that you can get away with and not get away with the the things that are important to focus on um lots of little things so it's just like learn tons of lessons for i I mean i'm still learning lessons for you know from rot 2013 you know a lot of time you know like a lot of times you'll, if you're a producer and you go away for a week and you come back, people will add shit to the game while your back was turned. You'll be like, what the fuck? How did that happen? You right. know, that's how we ended up with a shitty shotgun in Route 2013 because I was gone for a week and they just kind of threw it in there and it didn't, it was not fun to use. And I was like, well, that wouldn't have happened if I was there. So the lesson is never go anywhere. Never just stay, literally... stay and make sure you micromanage everybody. Babysit all the developers all the time. Don't give them any freedom. Fight. Yes. No creative. Or else they'll start. <laughs> no, or else they'll start adding shit you didn't ask for, and it's ridiculous. And it's and next next thing you know, there's a whole sewer system under the game. It's like who 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 did that? Put that. It's like, oh, no, I, thought it, I thought it would be cool. I was like, that's not what you were supposed to be doing. Anyway, um, yeah, we 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 refer to that as the doomstick moment. Whenever <laughs> whenever that happens, uh, whenever somebody goes and adds something when nobody was paying attention because they thought it might be cool and fun, and it ends up costing everybody else a bunch more dev time to fix it. Uh, we doomsday. call that a, we we call that a doomstick moment. We yeah. still that still gets used a lot because that's what happened with Route 2013. The the doomstick was the shotgun that we added post launch because Route I don't know if you know never had a shotgun. We always thought it needed it needed like a three button. You know it had yeah. had dual pistols. It had the MP40 and then a bunch of rocket weapons. So we're right. like you know it really needs a shotgun and it got a shotgun and it looked really cool but it played really shit because uh, I wasn't there to hammer in on the design that we had agreed on and it kind of just went in the game. And it's uh, one of those funny things that we still bring up uh, 15 years later. As you should. Yeah, doomstick moment. This is a <laughs> doomstick moment. Well, this interview's over now. <laughs> um, the, uh, 
So between Rot 2013 and um, Ludicrous Edition, um, obviously New Blood forms. Yeah. I mean, mostly I want to know, like, you've definitely carved a niche. New Blood has a look, a feel, and a vibe. And, and sure. that's been, um, obviously, you've had a hand in that. Um, but sure. like, when, when you describe New Blood to someone, what, what do you say? uh we love you and we hate money uh, we make the kind of shit that we want to make um and we've been lucky enough that now we've been successful enough that we're just mm -hmm. doing it we're just doing this shit for fun at this point like we're just we're literally in it for the love of the game um you know we're we're making the kind of games that we want to make because a lot mm -hmm. of times nobody else can you know you're not going to see people making games like gloomwood and fallen aces if they're just so they're they're not good bets i wouldn't no. bet on making indie immersive sim there's a bunch coming out now but it's like you know, without if it wasn't for if we didn't have the new blood machine behind it to make sure that they also, you know, do well. I mean, it's it's dire out there for for niche genres, even retro shooters like boomer shooters are popular, but they're not that popular. No, they're popular in like the retro shooter community. And it's a great community, but there's not that many of us. You're really only selling games to like a few hundred thousand people at best. You know that remember these kind of games most people see these games you ever see the comments if a boomer shooter ends up on like ign or something they're like what the this old what shit. this looks old as shit yeah <laughs> like it's supposed to and then the rest of the comments are like boomer shooter don't you mean gen x shooter boomers didn't play these right. games like first of all right. that's you don't get the joke second of all they did because my dad was a fucking boomer and he's the guy who played wolf 3d and doom and yeah. quake and 3d with me so boomers baby boomers absolutely did play boomer shooters but that's and it sounds better. better. It rolls off it the tongue. Better. It's an official tag on Steam now. Yeah. So get fucked, weirdos. Um, making something like Dusk, though, like, are you just like, a, like, why? Why? Because well, I know because you I wanted mean, to, but like Dusk, Dusk, like, so like that know, sounds Dusk like such David. a crazy risk. Dusk was David's game, you know, before it was a New Blood game. And like, he he reached out to me and I've told this story before. So like. I was, you know, when I when me and my buddy started New Blood, we we kind of just wanted we originally started wanting to make VR games because VR was yeah. super hot back in twenty fourteen, right. and we wanted to make a VR punching game, boxing game. We were trying to make VR punch out, and you know that kind of fell through. And then we kind of became like a publisher doing like, you know, we were kind of just that's how we got involved with the Red Solstice. Your buddy's over there right. in Croatia. It's kind of we were just kind of I don't know. We, me and my friends just wanted to do stuff in video games, make a company. So we were a developer, we were a publisher, we were whatever. And then one day, you know, and I had, I had invested in a game called Strafe, which ended up, you know, which I thought was going to be, which everybody thought, because they saw <laughs> the trailers, was going to be like, that was going to be like the that dusk moment. Like, yeah. Shooters are back, you know, at the time, but we didn't really know that it was going to be a roguelike where it can only carry one weapon at a time and that kind of stuff. And it wasn't, funny thing, if, if Strafe would have come out like a few years later than it did, would have done fine. You know, yeah. people weren't ready for roguelike retro shooter yet. What they wanted at the time was like a real throwback, you know, that ended up being like Dusk. And then we ended up getting, we've got a lot of roguelike boomer shooters now, and they're really great. Stuff like Nightmare Reaper. You know, if Quake would have come out like two or three years later, probably not Quake, sorry, Strafe would have come Strafe, out like yeah. two, three, four years later than it did. It probably would have done really well. It was ahead of its time. In a lot of ways but you know i had invested in that thing and that was going to be a big deal and ended up not doing great i helped them you know I, they got to deal with the volver and you know mm -hmm. um and then i was like man maybe you know maybe there isn't going to be like a maybe shooters aren't ever going to be like i want them to be again you know and then i get a dm from some dude uh and he was like some random account on twitter that followed like three people it was like me tom hall and john romero you know i told this story before and i was like all right cool and he and it was david samansky and he was a big fan of rise Amazing. of the triad 2013 because you know as you know david loves like janky games he loves like euro jank games he loves yep. that shit so to Even him stalkers was like <laughs> yeah he loves stalker love Dude. i mean we all love like it's like a company when stalker 2 comes out like it's like a new blood company holiday we're like yeah, all holiday taken. shut it down let's yeah. go um can't wait and we're actually kind of this weekend we're all playing dead rising deluxe remaster because we're all big dead rising fans so i'm yeah. down i stopped my dead dead rising download to do hey, this interview i appreciate that yeah don't worry about it i got other stuff to do i shouldn't be playing video games in the middle of the day well Just it's can't. market research yeah it's, it, thank you um so anyway um so david you know dms me he's like hey i check out my game and it was dusk 
And we've put that build that he sent me, you know, we've, we've, we've put that up. It's like in the goodies of Dusk, I think the original build he sent me in 2015 or 2016. And it was all there. Like, you know, it wasn't, you know, the movement, the, you know, the shooting, just the, the fee, you could turn the light switches on and off, break the sink and the water would come out, flush the toilet. It was like, it had everything. All the pieces of dust were there. And I was like, dude, this is, this is, this is it. This is amazing. I need to, I like, I was like, I need to work on this game with this guy. Um, and the rest, and the rest is history. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it's, yeah, no, we it's got such Andrew a vibe. Like, it's such a vibe. And it, like, it, it's crazy man. to look back on because at the time we didn't know how influential it would be. We were just trying to make a, a shooter that made us feel like the, it did when we were kids. Um, and now it's, you know, if we did what dusk, if it wasn't for dusk, I mean, where would, I wouldn't be doing this interview. That's for <laughs> sure. I mean, now, I mean, yeah, dusk, a medieval maximum action, spaceman, faith, ultra kill, gloomwood. And now well, yeah. like fall, fallen ace is definitely art wise is a definite yeah. shift. Um, yeah. but just like all these fucking hits for the people that like shooters and I'm yeah, just the last even five, six years have been crazy. Yeah. The pandemic was very good for us. And so, yeah. see, because we've always been, we've always been remote. Yep. So, like, when the pandemic happened, we just like got, we just ended up. It was great. We were like, well, we just, we don't leave the house anyway. Yeah. So I guess we'll just ship a bunch of video games. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm even finding the the PlayStation, like the PSX, PlayStation One, um, yeah. aesthetic right now, coming. Yeah. yeah, like coming into yeah, play PS4, right now. PS- yeah even another one just came out hollow body which has got that ps2 silent hill yeah we're very yeah. much you know i talk about this a lot games go in circles right yeah. you know uh everything goes in cycles whether it's fashion or movies or music or whatever like it always comes back around so we came back around to like you know mario style pixels art yep. and then you know you know 16 bit 32 bit <laughs> and then you know ps psx style now it's going to be ps2 style and i keep saying this we're very soon we're gonna start getting like Call of Duty One, Half Life mm. Two style retro yeah. games again. Yeah. It's retro now. It's it's fucking insane to say, but like Call of you know Call of Don't Duty like hide behind box and <laughs> defend defend the fucking the the <laughs> the um the trenches yeah. for ten minutes while you know epic music plays. It's like a retro thing now. I would kill for a game like Call of Duty Two now. Those big set I, pieces. I have no idea what the hell Call of Duty is now. I, I'd see like ads for like Modern Warfare 3 and it's like Rey Mysterio, Nicki Minaj, like, like uh, doing T-Bag suplexes and, and shit. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. They it's got too fast. Uh, they got me movement now. I'm like, you mean, you mean bunny hopping? Like, that's this. <laughs> I Maybe know. I don't. I, I I only see the memes about Omni movement. I haven't Basically. I haven't touched Call of Duty in a minute. Um, no, it's been a long time. Yeah, like I don't know. Maybe Black Ops something. But I think the last one I played was the, for a little bit was when they introduced the because the it was the um the Fortnite mode. I think it was the original modern. It's it's funny because like there's been like a Modern Warfare three like three times. Or something. Yeah, there, and they always change the I name. Might have been the la- I think it might have been like the last modern. I think it was the 2019, whichever one that one, the Modern Warfare was, was the last Call of Duty I played for like more than 10 minutes. Yeah. I used to really like playing the campaigns. I don't even know if they have campaigns anymore. I don't know either, like, to be honest with you. Like, they were like really cinematic and they were like, yeah. it was like playing a fucking action movie. It was like playing like White House Down or like what, you know, shit like that. I was like, those were cool. I I enjoyed like the spectacle of them. Totally. But like, I don't even think they have those anymore. I think they're just multiplayer games. I literally don't know. It's like it exists in a world. All these big games, whether it be Fortnite or Destiny or War, Warframe or Call of Duty, they're their own game with their own audience and their it's, own marketing and their own, own thing, everything. Yeah. Out- its own planet that it doesn't it used to be mainstream and obviously it's still super mainstream but like it doesn't come across my feed like at all i mean i see destiny stuff i have it's to me it's like world of warcraft where it's like those people exist in their own Mm -hmm. world and do that same with destiny and fortnite or apex people like i have no idea what the fuck goes on in apex legends but it's been out for like 15 years (laughs) that's all i know is that's why we're not getting titanfall 3 they're too busy making fucking apex stuff makes too much money over there yeah I mean, whatever, I, if it makes billions of dollars. I know. I, I like too many different types of games just to sit on one, though. 
And I, I that's, that's probably that's the same with you. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. It's like because I've never played any like live service slop. I just uh, I, I like games where you beat them and you're like, cool, mm -hmm. game over, mm -hmm. credits roll. You know, even even once in a while, where one comes out that I do play because I don't play multiplayer games really. Every once in a while, I play something with friends. Like Helldivers came Helldivers, out. Helldivers, yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Weekend, it came out over that weekend. I, I actually got into it before it blew up and became like really big. You know, the, I literally got it when it launched. And me and my buddies played it for like you know that first weekend, put like twenty hours into it. Yeah. I was like, cool. It's a fun ass game. I wish it was. I wish there was an ending to it because I'm never gonna go back to it. Like how how many how many bugs can you shoot, man? I wish it like had a campaign where you did that and then That'd at the sick. end they were like, congrats, and they're like you do something and you kill the brain. I wish it was like Starship Troopers where it had a fucking mm. ending. Yeah, and you fight for democracy <laughs> and then put the flag yeah. on the bug and then it says it's yeah, scared it and you win. Yeah, it's scared. Where do we go from here? How did you and Night Dive get chatting about Ludicrous Edition? I've known Steven for a million years. Um, yeah. And we've always wanted to do something together because I yeah. always ask Steven, I always go like, hey, remake this game from my yeah. childhood. Hey, remake this game Same. from my childhood. He's like, Dave, I can't. I can't get the rights. I'll... But so we're, they were trying to do a rough. So what do you want? Get them uh, in here. They were, yeah, they were trying <laughs> to do a... Um, uh a rot remaster a rot uh yeah what remaster we, what a remaster yeah i guess a Remake? remaster of rot uh, which is what i originally wanted to do in 2013 we ended up with a fucking reboot fine um there it got yeah us i wanted to do an hd yeah so an hd remaster they've been trying to do it for a while apogee was trying to do it um they had gotten the new apogee with you know scott miller and terry mm -hmm. and they had tried to get um 3d realm slipgate ironworks to do it and around i guess it was uh 20 you know pandemic time yeah. um and it just it was it wasn't happening uh they got busy with other projects or whatever and it came back to apogee i guess and terry comes terry comes to me and he goes <laughs> dave he goes hey dave uh would new blood new blood want to do the rot remaster and i was like no that's not our fucking business you know who should do it <laughs> this Night guy die. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, Kaiser literally already has his Kaiser's been like working on a like a rot remaster and Kex like in his spare time for like years. That's what Kaiser <laughs> does, right? You know, everything, everything in Kex engine. God bless Kex. Yeah. Um, so he already like had one running, and I was like, No, you don't want us, you want night dive. But like, and I so I got in touch with Larry and Steven, put them yeah. all like, we all on the call, and Terry was like, Oh, actually, yeah, I was like, Yeah, no shit. Who else should do like that's what they that's literally night dive's entire business is doing shit like this. Um, so I got us all on a call and I said, listen, this is what should happen. It should be night dive doing the development. Obviously Apogee can be the publisher of record and new blood me and my guys, because I know rise of the me and like Leon and Simon mm. and stuff, no rise of the triad better than anybody on planet earth, um, should kind of like oversee it and produce it and help out. And, you nice. know, we'll do a new episode, we'll do a new episode and we'll get like people like, you know, me and Samansky and Kaiser and Ethan and guys from night dive to make some levels. We'll do a new episode. We'll package everything in it. We'll do new cutscenes and get new art and, you know, include a bunch of beta stuff and, you know, do give it the remaster that rots always deserved to be. And I mean, I told them straight off the bat, I'm like, this isn't going to make anybody any money. I was like, tell your Atari overlords, that we mm -hmm. are literally doing this because this is it's the kind of thing that you do for the love of the game. It's good. Like this is what Rise of the Try every other you guys fucking did a remaster of PO'd, okay, <laughs> which again nobody gives a shit about. Uh Rise of the Triad deserves like a proper night dive remaster, if yes. only for the, the fucking civvy memes and stuff like that. And we did it, and it turned out really, really well. Um, it was a lot of work because Night Dive is secretly working on like tons of other stuff at the time. You know, yeah. they were trying to squeeze in rot in between like Quake and Doom and like all these other things that Night Dive's doing, and like you know, they're obviously really stretched thin. Um, and that's when, you know, Lexi had been doing a ton of work mm -hmm. on it because Kaiser like didn't have time to get in there and do stuff. He had the, you know, that, yeah, y'all, you got to keep that Bethesda money flowing. So you got to, you know, work on the quakes. Big stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the quakes. So Lexi had really stepped up and I was like, yo, Lexi should be the lead on this. Yeah. He's doing such amazing work. She And she's like, she gets it. She loves Rise of the Triad. I'm like, yeah, like talk about passionate it. about a game. Like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure when you guys did the interview, she was yep. like talking about it. She did it. We totally. had her in the, in the doing interviews it packs and everything and like nice. i was like she gets it she should be the lead on this and she did you know she was she didn't she she got in there and you know did such an amazing job and i helped i helped out make my biggest thing was obviously not just you know making sure you know as the ep making sure all the pieces mm -hmm. fit but really that new episode 
I wanted to make sure that was like the best. It was like I wanted to make sure it was like the best rot has ever been. Because to be fair, Rise of the Triad, the original game, is not great. It is a it is a C plus game at, at best. best. People, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, it is like it is it was it was it was it was late. It was on an old engine. Those levels are fucking, you know, they range from okay to awful. Yep. Um, you know, no, uh, you know, if you if even if you look at the reviews for Ludicrous Edition, most of them are like, wow, really great meme master. And then people who are like, yo, this game was not really good. And I was like, that's not the point. That's not the point. All right, Rise of the Triad was a great game. You just don't understand. It had dog mode. Um, people remember it for like the things that it did. It, it was funny. You yeah, get, it was you know, funny. It was it weird. Was, you know, you had- it, it, you did, it did things that no other games did. You know, shrooms mode, obviously dog mode, god mode, where you actually turn into god. Everybody yep. remembers the yawning and the hand. It, it it was one of those, it's nostalgia. People remember, like, it's one of those games where if we didn't bring it back, people, it would, like, every once in a while, you probably see a tweet like, does anyone remember this yeah. game where you could turn into a dog and god? People would be like, it, you know, it was one of the, it's definitely one of those games that, you know, would have been lost to time if we hadn't done what we've done with it over the last 10, 15 years. So yeah. like, um, I'm glad that we finally gave it the remaster that it deserves. I love that Ludicrous Edition exists. I love that I, I, I talked limited run into making fucking lunch boxes. That was not Amazing. easy to do. Because again, this is not going to make anybody any money. It's like, it's at the point where I'll just reach into the new blood piggy bank at this yeah, point to like, get this shit made. Let's do for it. The, for the love of the game, for the feds, because that's, you know, even if it's just, even if we just make one to give to like Tom Hall, like yeah. that's what I, that's what we're doing this for. Like, then it's worth um, it. It is. Well, I mean, it's, it's, well, a lot of what we do at Night Dive and New Blood and stuff is preservation. You know, that's yeah. just as important as anything else. Keeping these games, like I said, you know, Doom and Quake will live forever, but games like, you know, Rot and Blood and shit like PO'd or Shadow Man. Like these are games that if you do not preserve them or re-release them or make sure they're available on modern systems, they will be lost to time. Yeah, you know they will be lost to history. So like it's what we do is important. And it's like it's fun, but like also it's important. Game preservation is important. Making sure that like listen, at some point, you know our monitors and our USBs and our hard drives probably aren't going to work anymore. But at least for the foreseeable future, until the apocalypse comes, it'd be good that you should. You should be if you think about a game from your childhood, and you go fuck. I wonder if I want. I want to play that. Yeah. I want to remember Rise of the Triad. I wonder if that. I wonder if I can play that. And you type Rise of the Triad into Google, and boom, pops up on Steam. Rise of the Triad Ludicrous Edition. And for fifteen, twenty fucking dollars, you can relive your childhood for twenty minutes. We've done our job. It should, it. Yeah. It, it, yeah, should. it should be that easy. It should. It should be that easy. Yeah, and that's what we're. That's what we're doing. It was. It was one of those games I remember as a kid. Just like you would call your friend over and be like, "Come see this." this fucked up yeah. shit like you'd type in a, a code yeah. or get yeah, into the menu and like cheat and be like i'm a dog now every, everything in everything in video games felt like hacking back then just uh, having to use dos right? to open games typing in cheats finding weird secrets i mean the multiplayer like rock did things that nobody had done yet it was the first game with rocket jumping it was the first game to have dual pistols which yep. is funny because it shares it shares both of those with a game that came out on the exact same day marathon by bungie on mac also had dual pistols, also had rocket jumping. So it is most because of the way they happened in the levels, I believe that Marathon is usually credited with the dual pistols and Rise of the Triad is usually credited with rocket jumping, but neither game can actually claim it because they came out on the same day in 1994, which is fucking hilarious. That's a crazy Um, coincidence. They didn't talk to each other. Like nobody at Bungie knew anybody at Apogee. Like it was just. That's insane. People at the time, they were probably all watching like the same kind of movies, like Hong Kong action movies had become a thing in the West. And they were like, I got to get John. We need both of these. Yeah, it's like how how has nobody ever had boom 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 in a shooter before? Uh, and then rocket jumping was obviously more of an accident. But in rot, you actually you, you needed to do it to reach certain secrets. Yeah. So it was like an a actual true mechanic. ending. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so you know, rot gets credited with rocket jumping, and marathon nice. gets dual pistols. That's some of my useless FPS trivia. No, um, important. Yeah. Nice. What's, What's your play? favorite weapon in the game? 
Uh, the firebomb, I'd say. Um, well, actually, no, it's the flame wall in the original. Okay. Um, just because you get the xylobones, you know, you shoot the flame wall and the big flame comes out yeah. and everybody turns the skeleton and they go. Brruh, 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 brruh. Uh, that was always hilarious. And then in the remake, probably the firebomb because the way the remake, right, the reboot, sorry, 2013 has uh, like the weapons in that game was one of the things we just nailed. All the weapons in that game do the coolest stuff where you can right click, left click, and the firebomb, you can aim it and shoot it up and yep. then down. And you can literally like drop it down a hole and kill someone down there in multiplayer if you aimed it just right. And it was actually like really fucking cool. Uh, the, the people still play Rock 2013 multiplayer. There's a dedicated community and they still play it pretty much every week. That's crazy. Um, yeah, Saturday Night Raw. It's still going. I jump in there from time to time. It is nice. wild. Nice. Um, yeah, favorite cool, weapon. Man. Yeah, flame wall first one. Reboot probably firebomb. Yeah. Nice. Um, I always had a small this, this split missile. Yep. The uh, the oh, I'll rise to try it. Also, the first game with missile cam. If you type in, uh, I forget what it's. I forget what the cheat code is, but you can make it so when you fire like it the goes. bazooka, you could actually follow it with a camera. That's uh, speaking of. PO that's the yeah. default for the rocket launcher in PO is missile cam yeah. and it's when that for when I was yeah. recording trailer footage for that I was like oh my god this is ridiculous yeah, it's it's you it's usually off by default because it makes you very nauseous it was crazy it makes for some good yeah. action shots but um, yeah it does. was there anything that you wanted to shout out anything that you wanted to touch on that uh, that we didn't no, I mean, like, it's, um, listen, it's been, how many, how long, when did we even release Ludicrous Edition? It's been over a year already, yeah, yeah we almost, did it last yeah, year. A year um, and a bit, year and change. Anyway, it's coming up, it's come 30 years, we're coming up on the anniversary, Woo. the 30-year 30, 30 anniversary of Rise of the Triad. It's hard to say, because obviously, you know, the beta that everybody played was 1994, then the full mm -hmm. release was February 1995, so it's, it's, it's like, what's the official, what's the 30-year anniversary? Is it, is it December? Is it February? I'm kind of, I'm going with February because I always sure. call we call it Rot 95 and the full registered version was February 95. So I think we're going to, you know, we're planning some stuff for the anniversary. Mostly, um, you know, we're going to be shipping those anniversary editions, the, the nice. lunchbox edition that, that I've seen the first sample from Limited Run. They are, I know Limited Run hasn't has issues in the past with getting stuff to people on time, but they've said they're coming in February. Um, so hopefully everybody will get their, their Rot lunchboxes um in february and they can eat lead and be buried in a lunchbox because that was the Amazing. whole thing um Amazing. yeah so we're getting the 30th anniversary editions out we well, i'm trying to get like lexi and the team to like maybe put out one more two more updates for mm -hmm. um for ludicrous edition it's just night dive is so busy with Crazy. a million things so trying to like be trying to be like hey larry can we get can we get some devs to work on ludicrous <laughs> edition again like dave enough we did enough but you know right. if you know me and your blood like it's never enough i'm like we can always oh. add more cut content and levels and stuff and it's like it's there. enough we've done enough we're working on doom now fuck off you right. know so you know i gotta i gotta try right so yeah it's been it's been 30 years i'm happy to have been like the guy that really spearheaded getting rise of the triad back into the public consciousness again Amazing. i'm super proud of, i'm super proud of what we did with the reboot back in 2013 yep. i'm super proud of what night dive and everybody and us at new blood and apogee did with the remaster in 2023 I can't. I, I love the fact that 30 years later, people still talk about Rise of the Triad and remember remember it fondly. It's like it's a it is a formative part of my life now. It is a pillar of my life. This stupid, janky C plus game <laughs> from the 90s that we did a D plus reboot of in 2013 and A plus remaster of yeah. in 2023. Uh, it is. It's. I hope it's one of those things that people remember forever, or at least as you know. It's. It's when people talk about you know retro first person shooters these days. Days, you know people mention rise of the triad a lot you know yeah. it comes up in conversation it, people talk about it with doom and quake and wolf and all these other games that it does not really deserve to be talked about with but it is because it's it's there's there was nothing else like it and that's just really yeah. tom and you know william and those dudes just like they had such a fucking sense of humor that like a lot of shooter devs or devs you know just don't have you know like it was games the were serious 
Ooh, it's the same kind of humor that you'd see in like the early days of Sierra with guys like Josh and Al Lowe making like Leisure Suit Larry and mm -hmm. you know Freddie Farkas and shit like that. Like the the kind of games where it's like it's okay to just do dumb, fun, silly stuff because it's funny. It makes you laugh. Keep that in the game because it's dog mode. Sure, yeah, like let's put John's yawns in the game as God and it just Why kills not? everybody on screen. Is it overpowered? Sure. Who gives a shit? No kidding. You know. Let's make levels that are just stupid mazes. Why not? You know, beautiful. They'll make better ones thirty years later. Kaiser will do it. It's fine. Yeah, it's there. He's already doing it right now as we speak. Probably. Cool, man. Well, thank you again so much for for you know coming on the show and telling your stories and and really appreciate chatting with you. Thank you again so much. So, um, yeah, man, my pleasure. Anytime.